conspiracy. Everything that happened here is all Cooper's fault. It's their fault. This will be the last recording from the experiment. The hydropower plant will shut down forever. And no doubt my experiment will also... Looks like something bad happened here. Let's go. Ah! The hydropower plant will shut down forever. Okay, I'm just going to keep playing. Okay. Well, howdy, howdy, boys and girls. Welcome back to some more SCP Secret Files. Ah! Ah! His voice is kind of annoying, so... You. I still don't know what the concept for this SCP is, though. Because they all have something. And some of them usually have an item to tether to or something like that. I think I remembered actually stopping in a safe-ish room. So I don't exactly like the fact that I'm not safe. Okay. What was it, what was it beating on? Because it was this room. Yes. Okay, yeah, this is where I stopped. Freak me out like that game. Uh, in order to prevent the dissemination of classified information. Yes, we already read that one too. Okay. This is where we left off. Um, and of course, they're gone. Okay. <laughs> Great place to start. So we saw it last time, it was some kind of chained up poltergeist-like thing. Oh, I didn't even see this before. Tyler Cooper's journal number three. SCP-701 scripts have been out for a week now, and the participants have had minor rehearsals as described above. One thing continues to baffle me, they will always seem to recite the wrong lines. Every single person. It's strange. Almost like it's orchestrated. And when I try to correct them, they become defensive, insisting that they read the correct line. Other than that minor hiccup, everything else went well. I'm very much looking forward to the first full rehearsal in room 705 the day after next. After the full rehearsal, all will bear witness to the potential of SCP-701, and my name will become synonymous with it. Tyler Cooper, the genius behind the experiment, who managed to tap its endless potential. This is the history in the making. Rehearsals? I don't trust that. I don't know, that's a great question. You're kind of quiet. Can I... I don't want to increase overall volume. I just want to... Here, let's... Put everything... Around 75. So nothing really drowns out her speaking. Okay, so then can I open this now because it's got electricity? Yes. Oh, thank you. You're a lot less scary when you're being nice. I thought that right there was the head of one peeking around the corner for a second. Just the end of the railing. Oh, okay, I thought you were going to start walking. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Throw the thing. Throw the thing. There we go. Oh, wow. You're. Well, you just. Okay. <laughs> Not questioning it. If I. Why does it look like they're all going to the same place? I guess I am too now. I swear to God, every so often I hear footprints and I just like... Footsteps. I'm doing it again. Oh no. I've just started. I can't read that. I'm kind of security guard. I got nowhere near you. Why did you fall over? 
This guy got very close to. Drop. Everybody knew that flop. <laughs> Alright, what's this way? Fine. Convince me. Head over and check. Do they get back up when I look away? Or when I get too far away? It's when I look away. Oh, I didn't even see you. This is my main objective for coming here in the first place. <laughs> uh, black box quantization will report in data inside. SYDII encrypted by the technology department. Okay. <laughs> Through here. More stairs. So she did retrieve the black box. Again! I heard running footsteps. Dude, do y'all hear that? I have an echo. <laughs> This, this is one of my favorite SVPs right here. SCP-49. It's one of the scariest, too. At least in the original SCP game. I should have thought before I looked up. It was my first instinct. Just like, oh, what's up top? That could have absolutely just jump scared the hell out of me. Cutscene. You gonna do something to me? Every other elevator I've been able to take normally. No, okay. Wasted opportunity, but thank you. <laughs> oh, this is the flashback we saw. Where she was talking about she actually escaped with the black box, but they're like, no, you didn't. Or else you'd have it. Bella, we really need you to tell us the truth here. What do you mean? I'm telling you the truth. I completed my task. I retrieved the black box from Pony Station. Looks like the cognito hazards really did a number on her. What are you talking about? I'm fine. <laughs> no, you are not. Bella, there was no black box in sight when we found you. That's... Impossible. I'm positive. I'm, I know I had it in the escape elevator. It doesn't mean someone is stopped no it. escape elevator in Pony Station. None of what you're saying adds up. <laughs> That's impossible. It's just impossible. Look at me, Bella. Try and focus. What really happened? What? Bella. Think. I think she's trying, my guy. I, I don't think she wants I, to forget it. I, I, oh. Rewind. 7.05. So there weren't mannequins here. So I don't know if I was still set. Hey, King. Okay. I can't run. That's not what the subtitles say. Whoa. The, the minister's Bella's text was blue. Did they actually hang someone in the play? Is that the thing? Oh, 
Okay. Oh no. Oh, uh, how do I get past you? Oh, I should have started running. It, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Very wise of you. Okay, but I can't... I can't run towards him. What do you want me to do? Okay, this is not fair. It's wise to run. Is it open? Nope. What? Why'd you stop? How did that work? That much is for certain. Screw you, Cooper. Oh, wait, that's the actual item. Okay. Is this the same stairwell? And they all started assaulting each other? I think the mannequins are just re representing like the past. And of course the script doesn't want me to actually stop it, so it's trying to murder me. Okay, so we know it's a script, and we know it wants to murder people. And, of course, have its play played out. But what's its goal? Like, what's its whole rule? Oh, these are actual people. These aren't mannequins. Whoops. Leave. Bella. Bella. When I said leave, I didn't mean that way. But I guess we'll do it. I serve my my no. Is that what that's called? That's called the ambassador? A lot of those, like, separate entities from the original SCPs have, like, different number designations. So this is, like, 701. So yeah, they usually have, like, 701-1. So would the ambassador be the dash one and the script be 701? What the hell? Sacrifices head and seek redemption. What you hung him? Why are you stabbing? Stops me. Oh god, I was about to say he made a stabbing noise, but I thought he punched me. Ooh, punch you back, thank you. Get, 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 get out of here. Everybody's lost their marbles. They can't run anymore. I'm ready. What do I got press? Oh, you just take care of them on your own. Got it, okay. You're the next problem, aren't you? Damn. Fella going off on these mannequins. That would do it. Oh, 
Well, this would be the worst job ever to have. Script just want to be played out. Is that its only thing? God, everyone's looking at me. Oh. Am I crowned the new king? Or am I just murdering the old king? Sacrifice myself my to blood. I. I serve my king. With my blood, I serve my king. With my blood, I serve my king. With my blood, I serve my king. Oh, she can like With actually stab blood, someone. I serve my king. Is that the problem here? Just hallucinating. I serve my king! Whoa, wait, that was... I was supposed to do that? Like, story-wise? I thought she was slowly falling victim to it. So she actually beat the ambassador. Does that have any kind of... The condition is unstable. I just lasting effect on the SCP? But you need to let her rest for a while. Thanks, doctor. Well, let's go then. What? We haven't found the black box yet. You still don't get it, do you? Get what? What do you mean? A black box is merely a vehicle for recording the truth. But a black box isn't always a black box. She gave her a false mission? That's right. She is now the black box. You got time for a cold one? Because our work here is done. She sent her there to, as an experiment, is what I'm getting. She wasn't actually supposed to find anything. She was, well, she was supposed to find the SCP. And she did. I serve my king with my blood. Blissful suffocation. Sacrifice for his sake. Is she gonna hang herself in a hospital room? Black box has been properly contained at site 105 and pending oh, further me. investigation. Above is the full record of the inquiry. That is awesome. Uh, today's mission enter data regarding the investigation reports into the archive system on the right. Method of operation click text with red underline. Clicking data dragging effect will activate it. Right to the archive on the right. Left click to release data. Data will be uploaded automatically after entering all data into the archive. So, okay, that's fine. That's actually really easy. Submit. Easy peasy. It was actually very easy, so yeah. <laughs> Good. I like Zoe. Zoe's been on my side this entire time. You no know, worse than I expected. How about a taco night for celebration? So. Are we really using a living being as a tool to contain anomalous objects? Uh, hold on. Wait a minute. I didn't read these to the right. What do you... Uh, hey, I'm Boy. I've seen a great many field agents that are prepared to sacrifice themselves any time in order to complete tasks, secure, contain, and protect. For them, it is a creed worth paying the ultimate price for. And it is our duty to record all this truthfully and honestly so that people may remember them forever. What about these rules? Verbal abuse, da da da, da obviously. Contact with SCP 999 during working hours is strictly prohibited. Who is that? Uh, server password, visiting hours changed. Okay, fair enough. 
Relax, I'm just curious, Gent. Anyway. Of course, she changes up. You completed your first mission smoothly. We should celebrate. How about going for a drink? Old place. Of course, Gent's coming in. That sounds cool. I can't drink too much. Gotta be civilized. Stuart, I swear to God. Why a donut night? That sounds much better, though. Celebrate the completion of my first ever archived mission. My colleagues threw a small party. It all started to grow on me, my colleagues in this place. I started to really enjoy all of it. Maybe it was all the drinking. I dreamt I was lost in a strange cave. It was dark and damp and smelled of decay. And in the depths of the darkness, I saw at all times two red dots monitoring my every move. What a strange dream. Tequila is too strong of a drink. I need an espresso to sober me up. I'm not going to come in and there's going to be coffee on my desk. All right. So for personal reasons, I'm to use it. Files. Oh, I got files. So I just bring these over like last time. There we go. What is all this? Hold on. Just regular clay pot with a height of 23 centimeters and a diameter of 28 centimeters. It's an organism, a womb. It's an earthen womb. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll read this in my own time. I'll let you guys read this now. Because I'm, of course, on a timer. That sounds creepy. Alright, perfect. Oh god, I just gotta keep doing that. Sajinki no Kodachi. Again, you can all read this in your own times. Black of items printed during testing phase 8. 800 yen entered for each item. Items being dispensed every 2 minutes. Okay. Black, black. A single pack of cavernated chewing gum. Packaging in Japanese. Yan yan. Single yan yan cone. Peach dipping frosting. Packaging in Japanese. The Meiji Saika company does not produce this flavor. Some of these are very weird. Even omitted the doctor's name. <laughs> and no tasks. Let's talk to our friends. <laughs> Zoe, it's five to four now. Just about ready. Gent, you're not coming? Nah. Where y'all going? Doesn't suit me. What are you talking about? Hi, Carl. We're going to attend the monthly lecture. Monthly lecture. Someone? Each month, the foundation invites someone famous to hold a lecture to share knowledge and insights pertaining to SCP. For this month's lecture, they invited Dr. Trevor to hold a high reputation within the foundation. Interesting. Come in. I'll send you the link to the monthly lecture. Just so, there it is. Dance and Dragon. So we're already for our next mission. Multiplayer connection, what do you mean? This game would be kind of interesting in multiplayer. I just don't know what you both would do. There are many stories in this world. Some are read widely all over the world. This is way Some too nice for are this kind hidden of game. in dust and known only by a handful of people. Today I'm going to tell you a story no one else has heard before. 
a real story of mystery and wonder and adventure. And then you too will become the guardian of this story. The story takes place in a world of long ago. The hero of our story is a little boy. His name is Daniel. Hi, Daniel. One day, out of nowhere, Daniel got a serious case of chicken pox. It made him look like a strawberry. Uh -huh. To make sure he didn't spread it to others, Mrs. Page, the principal, had him isolate in an attic. And so, in the attic he lived, all on his own. Uh -huh. Mr. Daniel, while up here in this attic, you'll have plenty of time to practice your penny whistle. I hope you practice well and prepare for next month's art festival. But Mrs. Page, the melody is so difficult. Yeah, that's why you need to learn it, brat. You don't give up before you fight. My school taught me that lesson. Daniel was reluctant at first, but he trusted Mrs. Page and he knew he should listen. And so he practiced the penny whistle. Start, oh God, oh no. Wait, no, so ASDF space. Oh, why is my eyes watering now? Kid. You're talking about it was Suddenly, hard. he heard oh, some God. strange noises in the corner of the Focus attic. Focus my eyes for a second. They, they just absolutely gushed. What the hell was that? Who's there? Daniel decided oh, to go cute. over and take a look. <laughs> little kid. This game got so joyful all of a sudden. What the heck? Oh, do I have to click on something? <gasps> whoa! Wait! Whoa! Oh, I love this. I'm in like a Van Gogh painting. Hi, Mr. Bear. I can't crouch. Where's that? It was a mouse trap, and there was what a the red heck? origami paper dragon inside of it. Well, that's cool looking. Daniel carefully removed it. It was marvelous and beautiful. The only problem was part of its wing was damaged. You can fix it, Daniel. But Daniel found a way to repair it. Yeah. Oh, no. Whoa, oh, God. What are these stickers? Oh, I guess they are. Daniel held the repaired paper dragon high, high up in the air, imagining that it soared over all the world below. I mean, we're gonna gloss over the fact that he's still locked in the attic, though. He played and played with the paper dragon. Wee! Woo! Dragon! Soar! Does that mean this as if he's a paper dragon? In the warm afternoon sun, Daniel had to fight his eyelids just to keep them open. I feel that right now. Is it, could it be? Or is this all just a dream? Just a dream, Daniel. Go back to sleep. The next day, with boredom and loneliness weighing him down, he began to fiddle with the old radio. Good. Just 
Just for chicken pie? They put him a in an attic for this long? paper rolled over to his feet. Oh, I rolled it. Where did this paper ball come from? Just as Daniel went to pick it up, the ball suddenly came to life. Another paper away. dragon? Daniel chased after it. Please. I can't stop yawning. Jesus Christ. This is still absolutely gorgeous. I want to go in there, but I can't reach it. Whoa. That's actually going to work for me. Get back here. How do I get it? There we go, okay. Just as he was about to seize the rolling paper ball, suddenly, terrible sparks erupted What the heck? Okay, it's starting to look a lot more SCP. began to grow bigger and bigger. At that moment, a red figure suddenly appeared. Our paper dragon. The red figure quickly subdued the paper ball and threw it, in the it box. into a cardboard box. <laughs> God, this kid's just a pansy, is what he is. Daniel studied the red figure carefully. A little yellow sticker. It had a sticker on its fluttering wing. It was the paper dragon. <laughs> I wasn't dreaming. Thank you for saving me. Daniel was grateful and very happy. He walked closer to the paper dragon, but the paper dragon seemed timid and afraid what? and backed away. Just then, Daniel had an idea. Okay, do it, Daniel. He took out his penny whistle and slowly played a tune. Oh, we got the Pied Piper over here. God, I have to do this again. Good at guitar here and stuff, but like this is so simple, it's kind of hard not to do it pretty well. That's something. The paper dragon enjoyed the sound very much. <laughs> He's stomping around. It began to move along with the rhythm, flipping up and down in the air. Soon the two were playing and dancing, just like old friends. Why? Well, I mean, he, he literally saved the dragon from being all damaged and stuff. What? The paper dragon traced out a beautiful arc in the air communicating with Daniel in a unique way. Are they going to sleep or something? Oh, it unfolded. What the heck? My cherished friend, after many long years, we finally meet again. Tell me, how has your family been? Okay. A great thing you for playing that music for me. You know how I love the beautiful rhythm of that instrument. But we ought to take precautions, as the, the room. room is not stable. Do you still remember how the room works? I uh, know, I lost what you're talking about. Anytime. The piece of paper then changed back into the shape of a paper dragon and flew into the cardboard box. The box closed shut, and a calm silence was restored to the attic. So there is something special about that Daniel box. rushed to find a watercolor pen and marked the box with excitement in his fingertips. Here. B. Trish. Oh, dragons. Fair enough. 
Over the next few days, the paper dragon came out often to play with Daniel. During this time, Daniel introduced many of his friends to the paper dragon. What friends? That cat's name is Mrs. Carter. Oh, Ever good since job. I secretly fed her some fish for dinner, we've been good friends. That's Duke. This is Jessica's pet. He doesn't like rainy days. Or Mrs. Carter. Only smoke sausages for his table. <laughs> Alright, kid, whatever you and think. And now, we are friends too. My name is Daniel. What's your name? The paper dragon flapped its wings, as if it didn't understand him. Yeah, I don't think a paper dragon has a name. Since you like the sound of the penny whistle so much, why don't I just call you Penny? I'll Fair. keep practicing to make you sound better. Daniel and Penny then played baseball together in the attic. <sighs> Let's play cat. Second that baseball hits that dragon is going down. Oh jeez, okay. Can I have the ball back? Thank you. This is, this is fetch, not catch. But just as they were in the middle of enjoying themselves, a violent shaking suddenly rose from the ground. Whoa. There's another evil piece of paper. Said you don't get many earthquakes. At this moment, the box suddenly shot open, and thick clouds of smoke billowed out, followed by several paper balls. Penny attacked the paper balls without a moment's hesitation, and promptly threw them back into the box. What's in the box, though? Penny then flew around in front of Daniel and rushed right back into the box. As the box closed, the earthquake stopped. Okay, so he Facing a whatever friend's was. farewell without a formal goodbye, Daniel felt confused and lost. He Fair moved enough. the box to the center of the attic. Facing it, he practiced his penny whistle day in and day out. As the days went by, Daniel's playing became smoother. Good for him. One day, the box suddenly began to move. Another evil piece of paper. Uh huh? One, two, three, four. four. This time, there were four paper dragons. But they weren't alone. Oh, no, there's Enemies a lot. Enemies began to jump out of the box, too. This is kid's got an active imagination. Earthquake! Another earthquake! This time it's reached a magnitude of 5.8! In that small attic, the four paper dragons fought fiercely against the paper balls. When you're made of the paper, paper balls, balls use new tactics. They clumped together into a single monstrous ball of paper. It began to shoot strong bursts of electric sparks at the paper dragons as they flew through the air. As they were hit, the paper dragons fell from the air, one after the other. Seeing the injured paper dragons, Daniel felt very distressed and anxious. Okay. Just then, one of the paper dragons painfully started to fly and gathered the remainder of its power. The paper dragon transformed into a great beam of light and dove straight down to pierce through the monstrous paper ball. And then came another paper dragon. The monstrous paper ball was blasted to bits 
exploding into smaller paper balls. Trembling, they struggled to escape back into the box. I don't think anyone went back into that box. The sacrificed paper dragons were reduced to swirling shreds of paper, and a silence pervaded. Peace and tranquility were restored once again to the attic. This kid's got some imagination. Daniel it has saw to the be. remaining two paper dragons lying on the floor, badly wounded. He rushed to grab some stickers and treated them at once. Okay. Oh, I have control again. I have to end it here. I'm actually way out of time. Like, this is actually pretty gorgeous. I expected this game to be nothing but horrors, but like, I just, this, this interesting little, I don't know, bedside toy war going on. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget that like button. It does wonders for the channel. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put in the comment section down below. I'll respond to all of them as long as I'm still a small channel. And don't forget the subscribe button and the bell icon to see more videos like this when they pop up. Thank you again so much for watching. See you all in the next video I make, alright? Peace.